It's time to play cowboy! Do it. <laughs> Howdy and welcome back to another exciting episode at Grizz's Place. Today we're going to be talking about attacking a match. Now, attacking a match, I break down into four basic components. And what are those components, Grizz? Well, I'll tell you. First one is plan. Second one is prepare. The third one is stage. And the fourth one is run that sucker. So, we'll see how far we can get in this first installment. And we'll go from there. Hey, I just thought of, you know, if y'all want to, you know, get a little interactive at home and follow along. Uh, and I don't advise drinking to excess. I really don't. I mean, you know, don't drink and drive. But if you want to have a little fun, you could have a drinking game while you're watching, you know, me babble on. Every time you see me push up my glasses, and I've noticed I do that quite a lot, you can, you know, take a drink. Anyway, back to our regularly scheduled program. So the first step in attacking a stage is plan. Okay, now this is going to vary a little bit depending on if it's an annual or if it's a monthly. And, you know, there's match preparations that I'll put into a separate video. This one is just going to be stage specific. So tune back in for the preparing for a match that will go more into depth as to what you need to take with you and checklists and all that kind of stuff. So anyway, for for this video it'll be just attacking a stage and the first key point is plan. Now to plan, if it's an annual you'll get a nice fancy shoot book like this one from the Iron Duke Cowboy match a couple of years ago and inside there you will get among other things stage descriptions. Now for an annual what I like to do is the night before I like to read through the stages for the following day. I may scan through briefly all stages for all days but I'm really gonna concentrate on the stages for the next day and you know while we're kind of on, on that planning you know be ready when you get out there make sure you have everything you need my wife and kids will tell you I have waterfowl alignment disorder I have to have all my ducks in a row so the less things little things that can come up to annoy you or put you off of your game when you're out at the match the better and you do that by planning beforehand so plan next up in plan whether it's a monthly or an annual is taking a look at this at the stage now if it's a monthly you know you may be able to, you know, kind of walk through the stage front before the posse marshal reads the instructions. If it's an annual, you might have a chance the night before. I find it's helpful. Walk the stage front. Get a feel for the prop. Get a feel for the footing. I've looked at stages that could be shot starting at either end and chose how I wanted to shoot it based on the footing, based on how it was easier for me to do my transitions. So, take a look at the stage front. When the posse marshal is reading those stage instructions, no matter how well you may have read them before, you need to pay attention. I have had times when I didn't do that. I mean, I'd read them before, I knew what they were, and so the posse marshal's reading them, I'm just off daydreaming, going, oh, what am I going to get for lunch? Or I need to make another video, or whatever it was. 
And while the posse marshal was reading those stage instructions, he made some clarifications that made my understanding of what I was supposed to do on that match go out the window. And, yeah, who got a pee on that stage? Yeah, this cowboy. So you need to pay attention when the posse marshal is reading those. There may be things, you know, additions, clarifications that came in after the sheets were printed up that they ran into at the, the posse marshal walkthrough. So you need to pay attention to the reading. Now, the next up, and you can kind of start this if it's an annual and you're reading the stages the night before, you need to plan your transitions. And I have a whole video on transitions, but you need to plan, okay, what is going to work best for me? How can I keep both hands working? How can, if possible, I can be doing things with both hands while I'm moving to attack this stage in the most efficient manner. And that's where getting up on the stage front before you're actually up there to shoot can be really helpful. You can get a feel for how big those windows are, how many steps it is from one position to another. And I've seen, you know, world caliber shooters that will go through and even step off between shooting positions to make a determination of which foot they're going to lead out with. And by golly, I wish I was fit and trim and, you know, smart enough to do that. But most of the time, I'm just trying to figure out how I can get from point A to point B without falling down, without hurting myself or anybody else. So plan your transitions. Plan where you're going to restage, which pistol you're going to draw first, uh, etc., etc., etc. Plan out your transitions. Okay, I think that pretty much takes care of planning. We'll get right into the preparation. Now, preparation, this is the step where, okay, you've been through all the planning. You have, you have a plan in your head. You know, you've stepped back from posse chores and you're getting ready to go up to the loading table for your turn on the line. Okay, at this point, prepare. Now, this is going to be different for different people. you got to figure out what works for you. What I like to do is get a drink. I may uh, take a nibble of some jerky or some nuts or something like that. Just try to clear your head. Before I go to the loading table, I make sure I have, I have my loading block, my loading strap. I've filled my shotgun belt. And I have everything I need to do. And kind of along those lines, one habit I've gotten into, and it's really kind of subconscious, subconscious say that three times fast. Anyway, it's, I do it without thinking. And, and that's when somebody's shooting their rifle and they jack one out and they have to do a reload. I've found that as they're reaching for that reload, I'm checking my belt to make sure my reloads are there. Because reloads typically stay in that uh, slide or gun belt for a long time, or at least I leave my, mine there and they can fall out. So I'm just doing that when I see someone else do a reload. I'm making sure that, hey, if I happen to run into that, I'm ready for it. So anyway, back to our stage here. And preparation. Okay, we've had a chance to step back from the posse chores, catch our breath, make sure we got our ammo, make sure we got uh, shotgun shells, whatever. Okay, here's one. You're going to like this. Another thing, especially if it's the first stage of the day. Make sure you have your glasses. And even more than that, if, like me, 
you have special prescription glasses just for shooting that may be focused at a distance for the front sights, make sure you have those on because if you are used to shooting with a pair of glasses that is focused at about the right length for your front sight on your rifle and you go up there and shoot with your distance glasses, especially with your pistols, well, you may not miss. I think I had three or four misses that stage. You don't want to do that. So make sure you have your glasses. Another thing is make sure you have your ears. I think most of us have gone up there first stage of the day. We forgot our ears. You only get two ears, and if you're like me, you have tinnitus already. I mean, what's that ringing in my ear? Yeah. It's not the telephone, folks. That's tinnitus. So, make sure you have your ears. Okay, now let's, well, maybe not. Let's not head to the loading table quite yet. Now, one thing I saw, again, a world-class shooter doing. His, his cart was kind of off to the side of the bay, out where, you know, he could be alone. And I was actually going to ask him a question. And I saw him doing this and kind of held back. He was over there shadow shooting each gun, shadow shooting each transition, just to fix it again in his head. He'd done the same thing in the planning stage. He'd done it, you know, at the reading of the stage and just after the reading of the stage. But right before he went to the loading table, that was part of his regular routine. He would kind of shadow shoot the transitions at each shot. And a note here, if you see somebody doing that, give them their space. I mean, we all, we all attack stages differently. And we all, you know, address this game a little bit differently. There's some of us, we're there to laugh and have a good time. And if somebody says something while we're shooting or whatever, it doesn't phase us in the least. In fact, some of us enjoy it. You know, I find I shoot better when I'm laughing sometimes. So anyway, but if somebody is trying to get themselves into the zone by shadow shooting, you know, over at their cart or whatever, give them a little space. That's how they enjoy the game. Let them. Okay, now we're ready to head to the, the loading table. Now, at, at the loading table, you know, obviously you need to load your guns. You need to make sure you have the right number of rounds in your rifle. You know, I use a, uh, a loading strap. And, of course, I don't have one right here to show you, but maybe I'll, you know, pop up a little picture. Anyway, it has 10 rounds on each side of this leather block. You know, I like to use that it, if it's a nine round rifle stage, I take one of those out and when I get up there, I show the loading table officer if there is one, there's only nine rounds here. Or even if there isn't, you know, a loading table officer, you know, I say out loud, showing nine rounds just to fix that in my head because I need every benefit I can get to help keep me from getting a penalty. So anyway, while you're at the loading table, that's the time to load your guns. You know, make sure they're loaded. I know a lot of people at the loading table every time, they check screws on their rifle, they check screws on their pistols. I know one fella, again, a better shooter than me, then, but then again, who isn't? Every time at the loading table, after he loads it, he pulls it up and he looks at his front sight on his pistols. I mean, he just fixes that image in his mind and in his mind's eye. Okay, that's what my sight picture should look like. And just helps fix that in and it helps me shoot better. And I've started doing that at times when I remember. And maybe it's helped, maybe it hasn't. I don't know. So anyway, that's when you prepare. Now, like I said, different people attack this game differently. There are those that, while they're at the loading table, again, they are very focused. And they are very, 
single-minded in the task at hand. And if there are people like that, please give them their space. That's how they enjoy the game. Give them their space. If you see me up there, generally, I'll laugh and carry on. You know, whatever. But if there's somebody who doesn't appreciate that kind of thing, give them their space. Another thing is if you need help at the loading table, please, 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 please do not ask the person who is going to shoot before you to help you. They may volunteer, but please say, no, you need to get ready to shoot. I'll get somebody else. I have seen shooters lose a national championship because they, at the loading table, were helping a shooter behind them in line fix a problem on a rifle. And then they were called up to the line as next before they were ready. And I'll touch on the before they were ready part here in a minute. So anyway, they're helping a shooter behind them in line. They get called to the line before they're ready and get up there, shoot their pistols, pick up their rifle, and they had forgotten to load their rifle because they had been so focused on helping the shooter behind them in line. So if you have a problem, don't ask the person who's going to shoot before you you know, give them their time. And, you know, if you are at the loading table and you are not ready to shoot for any reason, any reason, you need to catch your breath. You need a chance to just settle down and focus. You need to whatever. Tell the TO when they call you, say, hey, I'm not quite ready. Can someone else go in front of me? And I have never seen an instance where the TO hasn't granted that. Because if you're not ready to shoot, you know, if I'm running the clock, if you're not ready, I don't want you up there. Because if you're not ready, if your mind is not tuned in, the last thing I want you doing is up there trying to handle firearms at speed. So anyway, that's, I'm kind of getting off track here, but I think that's a point that needed to be made. So, We've gone through planning, we've gone through preparation. Okay, preparation takes you up to the time you get called by the TO and he calls out, next shooter. But we'll cover that next time. When we come back for Attacking the Stage, Part 2, where we'll cover staging and running the stage. I hope you come back and check it out. See you down the trail. Until then, watch Tough Nut.